पीस टीवी बांग्ला मानवता समाधान India is far more democratic and secular. Okay. In what ways uh, you think you think there are any corrections involved in India also as far as secularism is concerned? Mm-hmm. And the other question is uh, when it comes to religion, mm-hmm. you think secularism some way contradicts the idea of uh, one religion or one understanding or perce- perception of God? See, there are two definitions of secularism. If you go by the Oxford Dictionary, it says secularism is nothing to do with God. In that way, it contradicts. The other of secularism means okay, let everyone say what they want to say. They have a right. So in that way, let everyone say what they want to say. Let everyone believe what they want to believe. I perfectly agree with that. So depending what do you mean by secularism. So India that way, I say as compared to the Western world, practically is more secular and more democratic. Practically. To show they will show, oh, we are the best in the... Fine. Here, to come to India, a person who has to give a lecture requires a speaker's visa. Requires Require the special visa giving you permission to speak, which is not required in UK, which is not required in Canada, which is not required in US. Mm. But practically, Indian government allows more freedom of speech than UK or Canada or US. Mm. Practically, it is mentioned in the constitution of India that every citizen of India has the right to preach, practice and propagate his religion. I doubt how many countries in how many countries constitution is it mentioned like the Indian constitution? Every citizen of India has the right to preach, propagate and practice religion. So you think it's a propagation that where the India is or is it something else? No, everything. Freedom of speech. Okay. Freedom of speech practically is book. Practically means in the right context. For example, Facebook. You know the new controversy, you would have heard of that that Facebook, some person went on the Facebook, had a new page, let's draw Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him. Peace be upon him, they have to say that. And everyone started sketching Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, maligning him in different ways, obscene sketches. The Muslims were quite irritated, what is this? And there was a big protest in Pakistan, so okay, fine. If you accept from Pakistan, that page will be banned, will be blocked. One of the persons from Mumbai, what he did, he started a new page on Hitler. Without insulting him, without praising him, let's draw Hitler. Within 24 to 48 hours, he got a warning from the people who manage Facebook. This is against our rules and regulation, and this scrapped the page. That means speaking against Hitler is against the rules and regulation. Speaking against Prophet Muhammad is in the rules and regulation. What are the double standards? It is on record. I have the proof also. So if they say we don't mind anything on the Facebook, fine, at least we can accept it. Here, that means they say maligning against Islam is permitted. Maligning Hitler, who's known to be the biggest terrorist in human history, which is on record that he has incinerated 6 million Jews. Not even maligning him, the same, right? Let's draw a photograph. So why the double standard? Who is this person who created this page in Bombay? It's a, it's a person, I think, is the most in- The proof is there. But now it's not there on the Facebook. Would your office be having his number or something? I don't know his full name. I think it is Mohsen. Okay. Oh. So he met me and he gave me the proof. His name is Mohsen something. He gave me the proof. This is the proof there. This is this. And hardly two, three people came on the page. Okay. But within 24 hours or 48 hours, I think less than 24 hours, maximum 48 hours. Because there are people controlling. And they have rules and regulations. It's not freedom. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes. Rules and regulations only to prevent Muslims. You know, to propagate. So what we realized that these double standards, if you want to call a spit, call a spit. But isn't, don't you think such double standards exist in India too? But you don't think so? But to a much less extent. Therefore, I said better than the Western countries. Practically. Double standards exist throughout the world. 
But I said better than the Western countries because at least they say, at least they say openly, fine, that a speaker requires a visa. They are not saying that, mm. but they are putting exclusion ban on what? On a person who promotes peace. So they don't want that Muslim should live peacefully. And the world knows that I have unequivocally condemned killing innocent people many times in my talks. I have condemned unequivocally the act of 9-11, where a few thousand people were killed in New York, more than 50 people were killed in the London train blast in the tube in 77, whether it be the Bombay bomb blast on 11th of July, mm. where about 200 people were killed. I have condemned several times. But because I'm condemning thousands of people killed in Iraq, Afghanistan, they want to stop me. That means they want to stop a person who's preventing the killing of innocent human beings in the other part. How was uh, Indian governments uh, reacted to your speeches generally? As far they... as the government is concerned, they're not. There never has been a problem a single time. Never a single time has the Indian government. And I really appreciate them. That we are one of the largest <laughs> conferences here. And, but naturally, we follow all the rules. We follow all but the rules. But do you expect the Indian government, external affairs, to take it up with the U.S.? Yes, hopefully, hopefully. Have you returned to them? Hopefully? Yes, we have returned to them yesterday. We sent a fax. We wrote to the Prime Minister. We wrote to the Home Minister. And we also wrote a letter to the Minister of External Affairs, S.M. Krishna, Mr. S.M. Krishna. And we are very positive because not only other Muslims, many non-Muslim also have called them. I am said, we know this man. We can watch for his speech. And we think, hopefully, inshallah, the Indian government should write because finally I'm an Indian. And I'm proud to be an Indian. As I'm proud to be a Muslim, I'm also proud to be an Indian. I'm an Indian and a Muslim. Huh, if they say in the exclusion, we don't want a Muslim to enter the country, fine, at least be frank. But they say we don't want a person who promotes terrorism, who hates women to enter the country. If they tell me I don't want an Indian to enter, I'm proud of my country, I don't want to go to UK. If they tell me in writing, you're excluded from entering because you're Indian, I care, I hang for UK. But they are maligning that I am a person who promotes terrorism. So this is the biggest objection. You think your over-explanation at your end, as far as women's rights and issues are concerned, can also, also gets you, gets this kind of publicity? No, because they know the Western media is against Islam in a big way as far as women's rights are concerned. And because I explain logically, convincingly, and many of the Westerners are agreeing with my view, they want to ban me. So I feel it is rather spread of the peaceful message of Islam. Because see, if they want to give, you should give the full context. And there are many women who come for my talk. Percentages. Can we um, have some kind of background on your growing up years and you know, your childhood? How, uh, where all and I how was born, born up in Mumbai. Okay. I studied from St. Peter's School. Then I went to KC College. I passed my MBBS from Nair Hospital. TN Medical College. Okay. And how I got involved in this field was I chose to become a doctor because it was the best profession. It is a good profession. But while I was doing my second year MBBS in December 1987, a person by the name of Sheikh Ahmed Didat, he visited Bombay and he changed my life. He expired recently in the year 2005, August. He was called as the Muslim scholar of the Christian Bible trying to remove the misconception and trying to get many of the Christians about Islam. When I met him, I was inspired by him. And then I realized that when I have to treat the patient or cure the disease, I have to get happiness. But when I cured the soul, I got multiple times more happiness. That's the time I changed from a doctor of a body to a doctor of a soul. My father is a medical doctor, he's a psychiatrist. My brother is also a medical doctor. We have a very flourishing business, but I told my parents, that's fine. I would like to spend my time, you know, for the cause of spread of the message of peace. I said, first I want two hours a day. They said, no problem. Then after some time I said, I want 50 percent. They said, no problem. Then I said, okay, I'll do two hours medical practice, balance spreading the message of peace. No problem. <coughs> then I said, I want to go full time only spreading message of peace. They said, no problem. So in this way, I got involved more. And during childhood, I have to stammer. They need to do stammer. But while speaking the message of truth, I realized that my stammering wasn't there. So it's mainly the help of Almighty God. So in this way, I started giving talks to a few hundred people 
Then the audience became a few thousand. Now that become 10,000, now 100,000. And on the channel, on the satellite channel, there are about more than 150 million viewers who watch me on the satellite channel, on different satellite channels throughout the world. And uh, your channel continues even in UK and Canada? Or have they kind of tried to block it? Again, my channel, if you say, yes, I'm the brand ambassador of Peace TV, yeah, yeah. like how Shah Rukh Khan is the brand ambassador for Tiger. So, so in that way, yes, the channel is continuing throughout the world. It's uplink from Dubai also and uplink from London. It's covering throughout the world. Peace TV is on about five or six satellites. 24 hours, right? 24 hours. We have a Peace TV English. And one year back, one more channel will launch Peace TV Urdu. What are your other interests? I mean, do you watch FIFA World Cup? Do you, is there any? I was a fan of football yeah. when I was in school and college. Mm -hmm. And there was a time I used to watch. Believe me, because of my busy schedule. Now my son watches more. And he's a football fan, he's a better player. I wasn't that good a player. So, I think maybe how many years before I watched the final, I don't know. But my son does keep on watching. But amongst all the sports, my most favorite sport is football, soccer. Which uh, of the definitions you subscribe to on secularism? Or you think both are obsolete now with the changing world and the ways uh, of life changing? Is it sustainable? The is current it sustainable? Generation? If you tell me secular means something to do without God. Not acceptable. No, so that's one of the definitions. Which, that's one of the definitions which I feel known. Then I'm against secular. If the secular means the person has the right to speak, right to follow what he believes, there's no problem. Therefore, the Quran says in Surah Baqarah, chapter 2, verse 256, like Rafiddin, there is no compulsion religion. He clearly mentioned that. But again, freedom of speech has a limitation. That does not mean you can malign someone, you can speak against him without proof, and you know, yellow journalism, etc. This I disagree. The freedom of speech is there as long as it benefits the society. That doesn't mean that you should, you know, malign anyone without proof. Labbaik Allahumma labbaik Labbaik Allahumma labbaik Labbaik la sharika laka labbaik Assalamu alaikum Ami Muhammad Badruddu Janadvi Pobitro Haj Upolokhe Samusto Haji Gonke Janai Antorik Mubarak Baad Labbaik la sharika laka Labbaik la sharika laka Shariya ter shikha Shariyat putte Allah Prodotto To Hide Procha To all for some good Manus Arabolbe, Etaholo Tawahid, Etaholo Shiri, Etaholo Sohi, Etaholo Zoe Tawate Daito Sunat Kebul and Kuru, Ishamosto, Pedati Amulku, Tunkur Tawabe Muzaffar Ben Mohsin, Pedatar Shange, Sunat Brudi, Kazar Shange, Aprikoku Aposkut, the Parana, the Parana समस्त मानुष के इस्लामे छायाते एक जोट करा चेश्टा आमादेर जीबन के आलोकी तो करान प्रयाश सुन्नाते लोखो प्रोती शोनिगार प्राप शाड़े दोष्टाए पापुन शम्प्रचार शकाल नट आए बांगलाते शे पीस टीवी बांगलाए बोइधो पाए बोरोला इस्लामी औरतों ने ती कोतो शुंदर भावे नुतों जुगेते शॉपलोता और जन करे छे जाना जन्नो देखूं इस्लामी औरतों ने ती बरोबरती अनुष्ठान पीस टीवी बांग्लाए Somebody or the other will be hurt by some speech or the other. So, where do we draw the line? And what is the solution for all this? See, there is communalism, religion, no, there is saying. And then there is also regionalism, yes. you know, MNS kind, which says that, you know, you can't enter the city, you can't, you know. So, where do these, all these things end? I mean, that, that live and live, let live concept. I mean, what I believe that as far as freedom of speech is concerned, a person has a right to what he believes in. If you want to praise someone, praise, even without proof you do, but there is no problem. And it may be wrong. If you say, oh, this person is very good, he is very honest, irrespective whether it's true or not, you have your opinion. But if you condemn someone, if you malign someone, it should be for the betterment of humanity. It should be done with proof. There should be evidence. You can't say, no, I believe. This person is bad. Or misquoting someone. 
So that is devilish. That means there is some hidden agenda. When you are criticizing someone, there's some agenda that maybe that person is getting very popular, or maybe he is taking my flock away, or whatever the thing is. So therefore, when it comes to praising someone, that's what the Prophet Muhammad said. If you praise someone, or if you pray for someone, if the person doesn't deserve it, it will not be accepted. That means if you pray for a person who's bad, it will not be accepted. Finish. But if you curse someone who doesn't deserve it, then the curse will come back to you. The same with the Prophet. So therefore, when you want to condemn someone, you have to think 10 times before condemning someone. If you want to criticize someone, think 10 times before criticizing. Praising, also you have to check. I'm not saying you should not check. But if you make a mistake, I've got no problem with that. Fine, that's your view. I may not like that person, you like him, you have full right. I may hate him, you may love him, no problem. But condemning a person, that also trying to give wrong information, misquoting, maligning, this is not accepted in Islam. But were it, were it to happen, you think generally we, particularly Indians, overreact to these things and is it better to ignore and then move on? I mean, unless there's a physical danger to oneself. It See, is. I believe that there are two strategies. We always follow in doing constructive things. I have always had a policy. When someone throws stones at you, raise yourself so high so that the stone doesn't reach you. That's my philosophy. And that's what we have done. We as a general policy don't speak against any other religion as a general policy. We talk about similarities rather than differences. Not that there is some evil done, which is absolutely evident, then we condemn it. A thousand of innocent people being killed in 9-11, so we condemn it. Who has done it? If we have proof, we say it. If you don't have proof or we doubt whether the veracity of the proof is right, so we said we don't know. As Mahesh Bhatt said day for yesterday, it is better to say I don't know than to write articles for the journalists. To write articles and say that I know without being sure. So that's what I say. If I'm not sure, I always say I don't know. Mm. No, that's why we keep writing allegedly and according to police. Because most of them have to be proved in the court of law. Mm, see, again, uh... again, 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 see, fine. I'm not talking about Indian Express, I'm not talking about you personally. But generally, recently, the anti terrorist department of Mumbai said that more than 90% of the people we arrest in the court of case, they're innocent. But when the person is arrested, the media writes in the front page for days and weeks together. Mr. X, they're arrested, Mr. X, they're arrested. The case may take place after two months, six months, one year. When he's released, it doesn't come in the news because it's nothing great. Or it may come in news brief one day. When he's arrested, it comes for weeks, five times, ten times, front page, then bottom of the front page, inside page, for weeks together. The best example is the international news of 1985 when the federal government was bombed. Headline is Middle East conspiracy. Middle East conspiracy, Middle East conspiracy. Where 165 people approximately were killed. I think in 1985 or 1996, whatever it is. Four weeks together. Finally, they arrested it for two American, American soldiers. Yes, yes. It came maybe once finished. Mm. Here also, an innocent man is caught. You may say alleged, alleged. When we read, in our mind is, so though you are saying alleged, what I would say, I would tell the media, that if you want to give 10 days, if he's arrested, give equal 10 days, or at least 20 days after he's released. But I know that will not sell the paper. So here, I'm not blaming the media, but the media is there to sell the paper. I'm not here to sell anything. I'm working free. I'm honorary. You think you are mm, kind of preaching or whatever you call it. It's very elitist in one sense because, see, it's bread and butter for the common person. Others, but for me, it's not bread and butter. I've got a roaring. I'm a silent partner. I'm not practicing. Yeah, why I'm asking this is, I think quite a few innocent Muslims particularly are being arrested, you know, without any of this thing. No, right now, right now, you know, in the Kurla case, one Ajmeri was arrested after the second, this thing. is obviously innocent because the third serial thing has happened. And even though the bail has been granted, for 10,000 rupees is still in jail. I mean, isn't there where, you know, people like you should step in and produce at 10,000? Believe and me, I have not heard about the Ajmeri case. Why, I'm telling you? I do read the papers, but I keep on traveling a lot. So believe me, I've not heard of this, so I'm very frank with you. But if he's been granted a bail by the court, and if 10,000 is the question, there should be 100 Muslims standing, 100 non-Muslims standing. Exactly. So 
You tell me, I will give 10,000 rupees from my own money. Well, I didn't know this. I didn't know this. And that's what Devir Mahesh is saying. He spoke to me a few days back. That there are people languishing in the jail. Innocent people, Muslim and non-Muslims. Yeah. Find the Muslim person in the jail. Even they cannot give a bill of 2,000 rupees. Yeah. So surely if the court gives them permission, surely there should be an organization and we'd love to be part of the organization. We would love to support such people. If the court has given bail, huh? I wouldn't go and try to... No, the the court has given bail. If I mean, the court hasn't given bail, I wouldn't... Then I'd do survey. No, no, he's given bail for last, I think, 20 days or something. If the court has given bail, I would not mind giving my money irrespective whether he's a Muslim or non-Muslim, irrespective whether he's done it or not. Because the court is given. Yeah, exactly. So why should I get scared of anyone? Yes, 15, 20. Others are languishing for five years, six years, you know. There are quite a few all over the country. So this is the irony that why don't we have organizations? And, I mean, you have given a good suggestion. Inshallah, we'll start an organization for peace and justice. Start to see to it that these innocent people... Fine, that doesn't mean that, that if the court has granted them bail, so they have the right as human beings. No, you want to fight the case. I mean, they don't have lawyers. I and mean, suppose they have... tomorrow they're convicted, then we'll condemn them. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. If they're convicted, oh, for sure Muslims were involved. After several years, more than most of the Muslims were involved. And what they did act is wrong. But I cannot say Muslims were involved. Muslims were involved. What extent, I may not know. But I know for sure Muslims were involved. After several years, more than 10 years, they had a verdict. They condemned many people. Some were put to death, some were this. If not 100%, I do believe majority of the conviction were correct. I cannot say 100% I haven't gone through. But I do agree with the judicial system at this point. Now, these Muslims, what they have done, I will never say what they have done is right. Fine, why they did it, it was a reaction. I can say that, but that doesn't justify them to kill any innocent human being. I condemn the 1993 bomb blast. Whatever was the reason, it is to be condemned. You cannot kill innocent human beings in any way. It's against Quran, against Islam. So this person living in Bombay, what benefit did it for the Muslim in secondary? Somebody says, oh, you know, at least we could walk openly. That is our secondary right or wrong. But the act of killing innocent human beings is not justified by any means in the Quran or the saying of the Prophet. So this, I stand up to it. What result it had benefit or not is secondary, which I disagree with it, even if it gets you the maximum benefit in the world. Because Quran is very clear in Surah Maida, chapter 5, verse 32. If anyone kills any other human being, and I say Muslim or non Muslim, mad or not, if anyone kills any other human being, unless it be for murder or for spreading corruption in the land, it is as though he has killed the whole of humanity. And if anyone saves a human life, it is as though he has saved the whole of humanity. So Quran is unequivocal, unambiguous, that anyone kills any innocent human being, he has killed the whole of the world. So where is the question? You cannot say, okay, someone in Gujarat did, therefore I'm doing in Bombay. And when I gave the talk on history of the Muslim monopoly in Shan Mukhanadhal in September 2006, after giving the scenario, there was a Hindu who said, Zakir Bhai, you know, if I would have been in the position of the Muslims, and if someone would have raped my mother or raped my sister or done atrocities, I would do the same thing what the people have done in the train blast in Bombay. So no, Hindu saying this, the audience clapped. That may be your situation, but karta tha. So I told him, what you're thinking is like an average human being. I don't disagree with you. But I, being a Muslim, I cannot agree with you. Because what you're saying is going against my religion. It's going against my religion, irrespective of whether they killed a thousand people or five thousand or ten thousand. It does not justify me to kill even a single innocent human being, even if he belongs to the same religion. Fine, if you catch the culprit, give him to the court of law, punish him, no problem. How can you kill innocent? So after I give the answer, even he clapped. So what is talking about emotion? So my lecture, imagine a Hindu telling me what the Muslim did in Bombay is right, and I'm saying that is a normal reaction of a human being. But I, as a Muslim, I cannot agree with your answer. Now this statement, don't they know? Now this statement telecast umpteen number of times in UK. Unequivocally. Unequivocally. So how do we achieve peace in all this? You know, there is an axle problem because of a you know, socio-economic problem. Then there is uh, you know, terrorism of whatever kind. You know, this thing, for this thing. And then there is also regionalism. How do we, what is the final solution? I mean, how do you... The final solution is that everyone should submit to the will of Almighty God, the Creator. So if we realize that this world that we are living in is not the last and the final. 
There is another world where we have to live, which is the main longer life. And all the scriptures say that. Christianity says that, Hinduism says that, Islam says the same. So if you realize this, that you may, as being a limp person, being a robber, being a smuggler can earn money, can get luxury, by being a terrorist, maybe get money, get all the fame, or whatever it is. But if you realize this life is only limited, on an average maybe 60 years, some die at the age of 20, some 50, some 70, some 100, 60, but the next life is eternal life. So this life is the test for the hereafter. If every human being realizes this, then he'll see to it that he will not harm the poor people, he'll not suppress the people who are downtrodden, he'll uplift them. And by uplifting them, by helping the innocent people, I'm securing a safer life in the hereafter. So it's basically you're you know, getting a post-dated check. I mean, human being by nature is not a good person. Mm. It doesn't mean. No. I mean, you need a religion and the no, 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 carrot no. of uh, no, no, afterlife no, no, no. for them to no. behave themselves. Human being by nature is not bad. Human being has been given the free will to do good or bad. As according to the Quran, as according to the Hindu scripture, as according to the Krishna scripture. But there are so many temptations. You know, okay, earn money, you'll be rich, you'll build a five-star hotel, you'll see that. These are temptations. So therefore, Quran says in Surah Mulk, Chapter 67, verse number 2. Allazi khalaq al al hayata. God has created death and life to test of you, which is good in deeds. So we human beings have a free will to either disobey or follow the commandments of God. So after free will has been given. See, because logically, if you go adamant only on pure logic and nothing else, believe me, proving any evil act will not be possible. And I say that in my lecture. If I ask robbing is good or bad, Robbing is good or bad? Okay. Yeah. 99.99% will say that. But if I say that I am a smuggler, very powerful smuggler, hypothetically, and that they will quote and say that Zakir is saying a smuggler, <laughs> that I am a smuggler, very powerful, I have got all the resources, I am a very logical person, I am a very scientific person. You prove to me, only give me one logical reason why robbing is bad for me, and I will stop robbing. Maybe you will say, you know, that if you rob somebody, he'll rob you tomorrow. So I said, fine, I've got 100 bodyguards with me. We take you 47, no one can rob me. You may say, maybe the police will catch you. I said, the police are in my pocket. The minister is in my pocket. I'm a top mafia. Allah or Ebadot Kore, Koran Ebu Hadis Eropor Amul Kore, Allah Pakar Bula Alamin Tadirke Sofol Kore, Ami Mutiur Rahman, Sheikh Mutiur Rahman Madani, Kiki Korle, Allah Pakarazi Haven, Dekhun Islamir Istambo, Dekhun Islamir Kutu Shamu, Kal Shonda Pastai Apuno Shamprochar, Rad Barotai Bangladesh, Peace TV Banglai. Dialogue, 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 discussion, discussion, discussion debate, 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 rebuttal, rebuttal, rebuttal conclusion, conclusion, conclusion. Eliminate misconceptions about religion. Get enlightened. Witness Dr. Zakir Naik in a battle of words. Dekhun. Shomuk Shamore. Proti Ryoshpotibar. Ratnotai Apuno Shampro